this would be here through this video we're trying to test if this works out or not so this here is the residency explorer tool and i have already logged in or uh, you will need an amc account in order to use the residency explorer getting an amc account is not that difficult all you need is a gmail account and uh, while creating the amc account it will ask you to input a few details about the gmail account and so yeah it should not be difficult to set one up and once you have logged in you will be able to see a screen something like this so yeah there are three things over here this is my profile this is explore programs and this is compare programs so before exploring programs i'll first set up my profile and you'll understand why i'm doing this later during this video and okay here are a few questions or a few boxes that i need to fill up residency explorer will take this input and will compare me and will compare my data to the data who of the residents who match at a specific program so you will get all this as you go ahead during the video so yeah my experiences under this comes work experience what is a work experience work experience is any experience for which you are paid and it may also include clinical and teaching experiences so for an img your work experiences would include your time during your rotations in the us so based on number of rotations you should input that over here and your internship also counts as a work experience so don't include your internship as 12 work experiences instead internship should be counted as one work experience i haven't been to the us i haven't done any rotations my only work experience would you now would be internship so yeah i'm going to enter one and then comes how many volunteer experiences so volunteer experience is anything that you weren't paid for and these need to be extra curricular you might have volunteered you know at an orphanage you might have volunteered during covid anything all these should be included under volunteer experience so i'm going to go ahead and include one over here and if you have more you should definitely include them and then how many research experiences have were you a part of a research were you involved in any kind in any research go ahead and uh, include it and then the peer reviewed publications these include articles abstracts book chapters and other publications so yeah these are online publications that have been reviewed by experts in the field and deemed to be of high quality quality if you have any questions you can just point the cursor towards this you know tiny circle that has a question mark symbol it will show up a pop up box a pop up dialog which will explain what you need to enter so i don't have any peer review publications of zero now what is your applicant type this is important i am a non us citizen i am i'm not a citizen of the us and i haven't completed my med school in the us so that makes me a non us i am and then the standardized exam scores these are important what scores would you like to use for comparing your profile to match the applicants so i did not i don't know what complex is i just gave the us i will step on step 2 but one thing you need to remember when you are inputting your scores you only get to input it thrice that is for this amc id i can only change my step 1 score twice that is i over here you can say i have already input something this is 228 i can only change it twice that is two more times and that also applies to step 2 so yeah we may this may happen you might uh, have not given your exams yet you might be you know browsing residency explorer and then you start entering values your hypothetical step 1 and step 2 score so that you who you want to know where you would match if you got this yeah you can definitely do that it's not the end of the world you can always create another gmail id and always create another amc id but if you don't plan on doing that uh, i'm letting you know you have three uh, you know you have three times you can input a score three times i have input 228 for step 1 and 234 for step 2 these are a little below the nation's average so once i've completed everything 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, yes, I'm going to save and continue. And now the residency explorer tool, it creates a list of programs like this. So how are these programs arranged? Here you can see something called the percentage of matched applicants who were non-US IMGs. Now, because I mentioned that I am a non-US IMG in the profile section, what the tool will do is it will arrange the programs in a descending order based on the percentage of matched applicants who were non-US IMGs. So this is very important. Your chances of receiving an interview from a program will be higher if the percentage of uh, residents at that place are their profile matches to yours. So yeah, keep that in mind. I applied to all the programs where the IMG percentage was above 30. And I think there are around 150 programs. So yeah, I applied to all those programs. So, yeah, this is one thing. And another thing you can see a few things over here, there is a state. So if I click on a state, all the programs from that particular state will show up over here. I did not use this feature that much and the region it is based on the region. So there are a list of states under each region. So all the programs from that particular region will show up over here. And apart from that, this is one important thing. Visas accepted or sponsored. I'll click on J1 because I only want programs which are going to sponsor a J1 visa. If I do not select this, even the programs which do not sponsor a J1 visa will show up over here. And if you apply to it, you'd be wasting money there. So yeah, let's go over a few things over here. So beside this column, there are a few symbols over here. And there's the city, there's the state, and then there's the region. What is the significance of these symbols? These symbols are going to play a major role when you're applying to programs. So I'll go place my cursor on the question mark symbol over here. Let's go over the symbols. What does the dash mean? Dash or minus below the range of matched applicants. So there is no one at that particular program with your profile, with your profile for that particular column. So let's see. So I have a dash over here. So under publications, it comes under publications because previously I mentioned that I had zero publications. So at all these programs, there is someone who has at least one publication. So I'll fall under this particular category that is below the range of matched applicants. If this appears over here, over step one or step two CK, avoid that program because your chances of receiving an interview from that program are very low. And also, even if you do get an interview, your chances of matching there, there are also low. So this applies to research, volunteer work. Now, what does a hollow symbol mean? Let's see. A hollow means you are your profile matches to the lower 25% of the matched applicants. That is the hollow circle. So I applied to all the programs which had a hollow symbol for scores. And apart from that, what does a solid circle indicate? It indicates that your profile matches to the middle 50% of the matched applicants. You should definitely apply that. And a solid circle, upper 25% of the matched applicants. And a plus symbol indicates above the range of matched applicants. So yeah, you should definitely apply to that program. So this is how I use these symbols to decide which programs I should apply to. So for my current profile, that is 228 on step one and 234 on step two, I would apply to all these programs. So there is one other thing. Don't take publications into consideration because uh, community programs, uh, uh, they, they do not uh, consider research as that important of a criteria while sending out invitations. So they, yeah, they put very less emphasis on it. So don't worry about publications and research, but if it is a university program, it will definitely look into if you have any research or publications that will play a role if it is a university program and then volunteer work. So yeah, everyone usually has at least one of these. So they will either be a hollow circle or a, you know, a solid circle over here. So yeah. For my profile, I would definitely apply to all these programs over here. And you can see over here, there's a 
this at this particular program my step one score corresponds to the upper 25% of matched capital so yeah go ahead apply there yeah i would apply to all these programs but let's assume so yeah, there is this one particular program where both step 1 and step 2 score it falls below the range of matched capitals should you apply to this program should i apply to this program no you shouldn't because you will not get an interview from here so you can okay you can apply to this program if you have some ties to the program if you have done a rotation over there or if you know someone from the program you can apply or else avoid it so yeah that is how i personally did it and that is how you should also do it and apply to all the programs which have an img percentage of above 30 you can go lower to that should not be a problem if you do not have any financial restraints i would also go till 20 and even if you as i said previously if you have done rotation from there or if you know someone from the program you should apply to those programs as well so yeah this is how you use residency explorer to decide which programs you should apply to so now let's talk about how we can use the sarthi tool in order to search for programs and also come up with a list while applying to programs during the math cycle so before i can do that there's one thing that i need to do as you can see on the top right corner here is my name i'm going to click on it and then here i'll be able to see my profile so what the sarthi tool does is it takes information from you uh, that that is pertaining to the kind of visa that you required your medical school your step scores and also a few information about the electives that you've done hands on electives tele rotations observerships any research experience any publications and what it does is it takes all this information creates a profile for you and then based on your profile it will advise of prog advise programs that you should definitely apply to and also the programs that you should avoid so i have already entered all this information it should not be that difficult it is very user friendly you just have to enter this information and then i'll click on save your profile and now after this i'm going to go ahead and click on the sarthi list now here when i click on sarthi list here are a list of specialties that you're planning to apply to i'm going to go ahead and select internal medicine okay and now after clicking on internal medicine i can see a list of programs over here and these programs are also divided into tabs here there's something something called the best matches possible matches difficult matches and other matches so best matches whatever program is placed under best match for your profile you should definitely go ahead and apply to that program so for me it has 99 programs i wouldn't miss out even on a single program which is placed in this list because the tool has already compared my profile to the residents who have already matched over here and based on it it has created this list apart from best matches there is something else called the difficult matches tab avoid this avoid whatever program is mentioned under this list you should definitely avoid those programs and then if you think you have enough financial resources left after applying to this 99 programs and if you feel okay i can apply to even more programs more programs then go ahead and select the possible matches and for my profile i am unable to see anything but you should be definitely able to see for your profile so you should go ahead and apply to those programs too and apart from that sarthi list under sarthi list these are the programs if you want to know if you want to you know get more information about the program go ahead and click on this view details button which is right here okay i've done it and then i'll be able to see uh, information about the program in order to make a more better decision 
whether I should apply to this program or not. Now let's ask you. Mm, I want to apply to I want to apply to programs which in specific sponsor H one visa. So in this information, you'll be able to see that visa requirement. This program does sponsor H one, and it does accept J one from visa FMG. So yes, and apart from that detailed information, there is other information. U.S. IMG percentage, non-U.S. IMG percentage. So if you are a non-U.S. IMG, a non-U.S. IMG, and the non-U.S. IMG percentage is very high, that is above fifty is very favorable. But I also apply to programs which had a non-U.S. IMG percentage of thirty or more. And apart from that, here the, there are comments about the number of first year spots available, IMG friendliness, IMG percentage. These are all personalized com uh, comments from Sardi students. Who have used this tool previously? They are either students or they are residents of that program. So, yeah. And apart from that, there is the score information. Score information is the minimum score and the maximum score that the program is expected. So, for this specific program, the minimum score is two forty. So, let's assume my score is two twenty five. Should I apply to this program? No. Uh, first of all. This program would not be displayed in the best matches list for you because Sarthi will take care of it. But if it appears, it might appear in the possible matches section or the difficult matches section. So, even though yeah, you'll be able to see information, even the score information about the program over here. And yeah, personalized comments again. They prefer a high score. Yeah, I guess that is self-explanatory. And apart from that, there is additional information. Under additional information, you'll be able to see the application deadline for IMGs, number of interviews last year, number of LORs required, how many months of USC required, what type of USC is required, and general comments about USC requirements. I can see two things over here: clinical experience in the US or outside the US is desired. I guess, yeah. And there's another thing only for old graduate. Okay, I guess the US clinical experience. They are particular about old graduates having this. The program director's name, the program director's email, so that you can contact them if required. The program coordinator's name, coordinator's email, and a bunch of information over here. Again, I can see over here personalized comments which are the students. This is important. The interview profile. These are some of the students who either match it there, or uh, sorry, who have received an interview from this specific program. So we have thirteen over here, and about their profiles: two five five, two six four, two five one, two six three. Okay, this is this program is seeking out applicants with high scores. That is evident over here, and here you can also see the date. That is the year of graduation of this particular student, the number of USC he had, he or she had, and the visa that the student required, and their interview date too. So. This is clear-cut information. This is about Sardi students who have received an interview from there, so you will get a clear picture of what the program is seeking out. Apart from these are the interview profiles, and this is the matched profiles. Okay, so you might not see anything over here because the student who applied here might have matched at a better program. So yeah, that is a possibility. But if anyone matched over here. You will also see the profile of the students who matched. So we do not have any matched profiles related to the program yet. I, I hope our students they got matched into a better program. So that is all for now. So this is how you can use the Sarthi list in order to decide which programs you should apply to.